A new study from researchers in the United Kingdom has found that patients who suffered from COVID-19 may actually result in long-term brain loss. And that comparison of before and after brain scans of these people found that there was really a significant effect of COVID-19 in the brain with the loss of gray matter in parts of the brain connected to smell and taste. In short, the study suggests that there could be some long-term loss of brain tissue from COVID, and that would have some long-term health consequences, and could be a very good reason why some COVID-19 patients lost their sense of smell and taste. So now comes a new data to show that a vice that people usually do, moderate drinking, can in turn affect further the significant brain loss associated with COVID-19. Let's watch this. So with alert level one, now in most cities in our country, the curfew for these cities have already been lifted. And as such, bars, nightclubs, and drinking areas are now allowed to operate with no curfew hours in place. Health-wise, we are taught that heavy drinkers are harmful to the body as alterations in the brain structure and size occur that are associated with cognitive impairments. But what we don't know is that moderate drinking may in fact also harm the brain. What we are taught is that moderate drinking of one to two drinks per day is pretty safe. In fact, as an endocrinologist, I counsel my diabetics not to drink, but if they do, one to two bottles of beer a day may probably be allowed. But recent findings regarding an association of alcohol and brain synchrage, especially in the era of COVID-19, have put that advice on hold. So if you or your friends or your members of your family do drink, please listen carefully. In a new study recently published in Nature, light to moderate alcohol consumption, as few as one to two drinks a day has been linked to reductions in overall brain volume. This cross-sectional study involving 37,000 healthy adults in the United Kingdom showed that alcohol intake was negatively associated with global brain volume measures, including gray matter as well as white matter microstructure. What is important likewise is that the link increases over time with greater alcohol consumption. So what did the study show? The drinking increased from one alcohol unit, which is equivalent to half a beer, or to two alcohol units, equivalent to a pint of beer or a glass of wine. In, for example, a 50-year-old individual, the brain changes were equivalent to the effect of aging of two years. Now, further increasing alcohol units from two to three, for example, resulted in more brain changes equivalent to aging three and a half years. Clearly, therefore, these findings contrast with some scientific and government guidelines on safe drinking alcohol limits. Remember, the National Institutes of Alcohol Abuse recommends that women consume an average of no more than one drink per day, Recommended limits for men are twice that, the amount that exceeds the consumption level associated in the study with decreased brain volume. What is also important is the study further showed that going from zero to one didn't make much any difference, but going from one to two or two to three units a day started already the association of reductions in both gray and white matter. It is also clear in the data that the relationship was not linear, 
but clearly the association got worse the more you drink. So while it is interesting in that even removing the heavy drinkers from the analysis, the association remained. So based on the modeling, each additional alcohol units consumed per day can result in greater aging effect in the brain. If you already got COVID, where there is already brain loss associated with the infection, further damaging the brain structure can do more harm long term. And therefore, might we say premature aging may lead long term to easy forgetfulness and long term dementia. Only time will tell. Furthermore, going from zero to a daily average of, let's say, just one alcohol unit was associated with already equivalent half a year of aging. So however, the difference becomes so big between zero and four drinks per day because there was aging of approximately 10 years. Now, this study, these findings may prompt drinkers to reconsider how much they should imbibe during their nightly escapades. For now, we have evidence that the effect of drinking on the brain is exponential, meaning one additional drink in a day could have more of an impact than any of the previous drinks that day. Meaning, try to consider cutting back on the final drink of the night. Might have a big effect in terms of brain aging. So my final advice, therefore, for those people who can benefit the most from drinking less are the people who are already drinking the most. But if possible, if you haven't started this vice, then please don't. In the future, it is our hope that we can also answer the question of most drinkers, whether binge drinking in a day per week may have worse impact compared to those who drink daily. So far, we don't have answer to that question. And hopefully, we will be able to more definitely pin down the causation rather than just correlation, including the association with comorbidities or previous conditions, including past COVID infections, possible worst associated diseases related to premature aging, related to drinking alcohol. So for the meantime, please stay safe. Keep your mask on. If you drink, please don't get Omicron. If you already had past Omicron, please reduce the number of drinks per day that you do. Drink less, but better aim for zero. This is Dr. Jerry Tan. See you again soon.